This is EBC Sports International, this week's stories. Tiger Woods wins his first PGA Tour title in five years. LeBron James talks expectations at LA Lakers Media Day. New York Red Bulls shut out Toronto FC. Seattle Sounders edge Vancouver Whitecaps. Conor McGregor returns to MMA. Plus, Western New York women boxers rise on the ring. Hello everyone, I am Lynn Pence, bringing you sports news from around the globe. Let's start with golf. Tiger Woods is back on the winning track, picking up his first PGA Tour title in five years. Woods won the season-ending tour championship in Atlanta, Georgia on Sunday with a two-short victory to claim his 80th career title. Woods shot a final sh round one over par 71 to finish 11 under for the tournament. The road hasn't been easy for the 42-year-old Woods, who returned to the tour in January after a two-year absence to multiple back injuries. His last PJ Tour win came in August 2013 at the WGC Bridgestone Invitational. Overwhelmed with emotion on the 18th hole, the 14-time major champion once questioned whether he could compete at the highest level. But the victory, along with the top 10 finishes at the British Open and the PGA Championship, removed those doubts. Next for Woods will be the weekend's Ryder Cup in France, where the Americans hope to win on the European Soul for the first time in 25 years. I feel like I've, I've played well enough, but I still um, have had, have gotten the, the, the nod from you know, our captain, vice captain, and as well as the players. And so uh, it just felt, you know, it feels great to be, be part of this team. This is a, a pretty young team, uh, but also a team that has played uh, quite a few Ryder Cups and President's Cups as well. So the, they, they've been through it. I mean, it's been what, five years since I won a golf, golf golf tournament, and a lot of the players were just coming onto the scene. Uh, whether there's JT Jordan, um, now Bryson uh, Brooksy was just getting out here, getting started, coming off of the, you know, the European tour. Um, so a lot of these guys just, you know, hadn't played against me yet, and uh, I think that when when my game is is there, I'm. Uh, I feel like I've always been a, a tough person to beat. As a player, you focus on your playing partner you're playing with and just go earning a point. As a vice captain, there's so many moving parts that you're in charge of. And so that was very different in, in 16, but with my overall Ryder Cup record, not having won um, as a player since 1999 is, uh, is something that, you know, hopefully we, we can change. And we haven't won as a U.S. squad here in 25 years on on foreign soil. So, you know, hopefully that will change this week as well. You know, there's there's a lot of nerves and it's excitement. I mean, it really is. It's 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 something we don't get to experience in that regard because it's basically it's the final round of, of a tournament on the very first uh, first hole and every match you teed up, and, uh, and it's a different atmosphere and one that we absolutely love. During Media Day Monday, the newest LA Laker LeBron James talked team expectations, challenging the Golden State Warriors and the excitement of playing for an iconic franchise. At the team's training facility, James spoke to the Los Angeles media for the first time since signing a four-year deal in the offseason. And then uh, I'm always uh, in, in a learning process. No matter you know where I'm at in my career, I'm always in a point where I want to learn and, and, and get things from um, you know, teammates and, and, and coaches and things of that nature. So I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, what we all can bring to the table and how we can all bounce ideas and bounce uh, things off one another in order to, to better to better our games. Um, I, I'm a basketball player. Um, I play ball. That's what I do. Uh, and that's what I live by. And when I do it at the level I do it at, everything else take care of itself. So, um, you know, my, as far as my business, those things have been taking care of itself way before I even came out here. We can't worry about what Golden State is doing. Golden State is Golden State, and they're the champions, and uh, they've been together for a few years now. So, um, you know, we put that to the side. We can only focus on what we can do to get better every day as a Lakers franchise, and you know, and hopefully someday we can put ourselves in a position where we can compete for a championship, um, as Golden State has done for the last few years. Head coach Luke Walton addressed the needs of the team with James. That will come with, um, you know, as the season's playing out, 
the two of us will sit down with the training staff and constantly be in communication about what you know what's best for him what's best for the team uh because we definitely want to keep him fresh uh so that up next new york red bulls shut out toronto fc and seattle sounders edge vancouver whitecaps we'll be right back Welcome back. This is EBC Sports International. The New York Red Bulls continue their dominance at home against defending MLS champions and Eastern Conference rivals Toronto FC. Here's EBC's New Jersey correspondent Edwin Vergara with the report from Red Bulls Arena in Harrison. Take a look. We're here at the Red Bull Stadium in Harrison, New Jersey, where the Red Bulls have just defeated the defending champions, Toronto FC, 2-0 in a very exciting match. With four games left in the season, will the Red Bulls push to be the top seed in the Eastern Conference? Stay tuned to EBCSI for more. My name is Edwin Vergara, one with 25. Thanks, Edwin. Over in the MLS Western Conference, the Seattle Sounders edged Vancouver Whitecaps to win the 2018 Cascadian Cup. Here's EBC Vancouver correspondent Thomas Likeness with the recap. Take a look. The Seattle Sounders FC defeated rivals Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2-1 to claim the 2018 Cascadia Cup. Raul Ruiz Diaz led the Sounders in scoring, knocking in both goals in the first half. Kai Kamara had a stellar performance for the Whitecaps, scoring the lone goal in the match. BC Stadium was filled with a sellout crowd of 27,863, the highest single match attendance in MLS history. The arena was loud and ecstatic right from the kickoff, where the energy from the fans created a playoff-like atmosphere, which was shown by the intensity from both football clubs. The Whitecaps would feed off that energy right away, getting early scoring chances early on in the match. But it was the Sounders who would strike first. Ruiz Diaz would get the first of two in the match from a tap-in from inside the box in the 21st minute. He would get another scoring opportunity for the Sounders, but would be denied by Whitecaps goalkeeper Stefan Marinovic. A catastrophic mistake from the Whitecaps' defense would lead to a turnover in their own end where Seattle would take full command. Ruiz Diaz would get his second of the match, which seemed to be lights out already for the Whitecaps. But just as the first half came to an end, Camaro would sink in a header from a corner kick for the Whitecaps, cutting the Sounders' lead to just one heading into the second half. An intense second half for both clubs where the Whitecaps would continue to test Seattle's defense. The Whitecaps had plenty of scoring opportunities from Camara, who hit the post, while Nicholas Mesquita, Christian Tachera, and Alfonso Davies also had a chance to tie up the match. Seattle would eventually prevail, earning the victory through solid goalkeeping from Stefan Fry. Not only did this win for the Sounders secure the Cascadia Cup for their football club, the victory also put Seattle three more points ahead of the Whitecaps, where both clubs continue to fight for the sixth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. The Whitecaps felt they let this match slip away. However, they explained their optimism in their hopes of making the postseason. We didn't get the job today, today done based upon points. Performance-wise, they're excellent. I won't fault the performance. What you can fault me on is not getting any points today. And that's where I'll give Seattle credit. Because they know, find a way to win. That's what I keep getting told. And credit to them, they've done that. These are one of those times where you feel almost sick to your stomach from the result because you put so much into it and we created so many chances. And it comes down to, to both boxes, and I, and I know we've said that a, a couple of times this year, but we can't come out of this game and say we deserved or we're expected to win when we aren't clinical in the final third, not clinical enough in the final third with the amount of chances we had, and we, and we make a few mistakes at the back that cost us two goals. 
Seattle's a quality team, and, and uh, if you really want to come out of the game and say you deserve to win, you gotta you gotta make sure and take care of business in both boxes. We can't look at this game and say, okay, you know, we, we give up. You know, we got six games left, and we're right in contention. So we move we move past this game, and we thank the rest of the teams for taking care of the table for us this weekend. But you know, if we if we want the table to take care of us for the rest of the season, that's that's not going to be possible. We need to take care of business, especially at home. Um, and I called this game a championship game. I can't I can't even put into words the magnitude of the next game here against one one of the best teams in the league. Oh, we just have six six more games that hopefully we can try to do everything possible to, to get in the playoffs. We fight until the end. We never give up. And we want to to get in the playoffs because the coaches, because they have given us all the tools in, during the week to, to try to get in the games as, as the, uh, like to have all the information possible to, to, to play against Seattle or any other teams. And since we are with them, they are giving us great things. So hopefully we can get in the playoffs for them. With the end of the MLS regular season just around the corner, each and every match will play a crucial role for both Seattle and Vancouver. The Whitecaps have a difficult road ahead for the run at the postseason, needing to secure wins against Sporting KC, LAFC, and rival Portland Timbers, currently sitting 2-3-4 and four in the Western Conference, respectively. They will also have to rely on bottom-seeded clubs in order to make the playoffs. Thomas I. Likeness, Eagle News, I'm one with 25. Thanks, Thomas. Coming up, Conor McGregor returns to the MMA and Western New York women boxers rise on the ring. ABC Sports International will return in a moment. And we're back. This is EBC Sports International. I am Lynn Pence. In true Conor McGregor fashion, Thursday's UFC 229 News Conference of his upcoming fight against Khabib Nurmagomedov showcased more animosity than respect between the two fighters. The brash Irishman announced his return to the MMA and was not hesitant to share his ill feelings about his opponent. Came back for the love of fighting and the love of war, and this I am going to truly, truly love putting a bad, bad beating on this little glass jaw rat. I did not begin fighting for the prize. I began to fight because I loved it. That's why I'm here now, because I love this game. I don't have to be here. I, I, I am set for life. Even without this, I'm set for life. From the last match, I'm set for life. Because if that bus door had have opened, this man would be dead right now. He would be in a box and I would be in a cell and we would not have this great fight ahead of us. Reigning lightweight champion Nogomov, who is currently undefeated in 26 matches, didn't have much to say about McGregor. And I don't know what this guy talking about. I don't understand what they're going to do 6 October. You think whiskey going to help him? I don't understand. Their fight set for October 6 in Las Vegas Team Mobile Arena. Boxing has long been a male-dominated sport, but women nowadays are taking an interest to train and compete. EBC New York correspondent Abigail Dumlau speaks with several women at the Rock Gym and Fitness Center in Rochester. Take a look. When we think of boxing, we think of male athletes like Manny Pacquiao, Mike Tyson, and Muhammad Ali. However, in modern times, more women are starting to put on their boxing gloves to improve their health. Here at Rock Boxing and Fitness Center, we speak to several women on what it means for them to jump into the ring. Signing up for boxing classes here in Rock Boxing will not only be about punching the heavy bag, 
but they will also put you through many exercises that are needed to condition the body of a boxer, including jump rope, kettlebell, pedal rope, tar fitness hammer, and many more activities that vary every day. I probably started doing boxing like two, three years ago. I do Taekwondo originally. I compete for Taekwondo nationally and internationally. I started boxing just to get in better shape and to like help me with my endurance for Taekwondo. And I just really enjoy like the feeling of like being in a ring and like punching or kicking people. <laughs> I'm here all the time. I'm in here like 20 hours a week. I'm just trying to work as hard as I can and there's nothing that you can't do if you work hard enough. I got into boxing a few years ago basically just as a good workout um, and that was really it. I wanted to try something new. I've definitely gotten a lot stronger um, and I think it helps a lot with confidence as well and it's a great place to meet a lot of people too. My advice to other boxers, um, good question. I guess I would just say um, to anyone new to the gym to just keep trying it out and give it a chance because it's an awesome workout and it seems very hard at first and it's it never gets much easier but it, it gets a little bit easier so yeah. You're going from here and just turn that foot. You want to open up and your whole body open for a punch. So if you want to and then you rotate that over and cover that top top. Top top. And when you turn your left foot, you're turning your left foot. That's it. That's not doing this. I started boxing when I was 15 years old. Boxing was a great form of conditioning. In between my basketball and lacrosse in high school, it fit well into what I was doing, like stamina-wise and breathing and moving around. So I think just seeing it on TV and you know seeing how much hard work goes into it really got me into it. So I've had four amateur fights. Um, I lost my last fight, so the first three fights were wins. My first actual fight was actually a knockout. I knocked her out in 45 seconds, which is crazy. As a female, it was very hard to get fights because um, you would have to show up hoping there would be another girl there. And most of the time, they would not be the same weight class. So I would weigh in with like a book bag on my shoulder and like jeans on just to weigh up to these girls because they were a lot heavier than me. Never give up, I think, is for any sport. It doesn't need to be boxing because um, I had to never give up into what I wanted to do. Being a female athlete and a boxer was very hard. People shut you down and told you you couldn't do it. So no matter what anyone says to you, how you feel, just know that at the end, it's all worth it. Although boxing continues to be a male-dominated sport, these women continue to prove that hard work and never giving up can lead to success in anything you do. From Rochester, New York, I'm Abigail Gumlau, and I'm one for 25. Thanks, Abigail. That's all for EBC Sports International. Tune in next time as we bring you sports news from around the globe. I am Lynn Pence, and I am one with 25.